Hey, this is Mr. Mitchell with another science video. Today we're going to be talking about studying populations. You may remember in the last video we talked about that a population was one species in one area. Not talking about everywhere in the world, but just one species in one area. One thing an ecologist often does is determining a species population size. So how do they do that? Um, one way they could do that is by direct population observance, by direct observation you might say. Now direct observation is only practical in certain instances. I mean if you were to find the population of this field of sunflowers that would take an unbearable amount of time. If you were to take the population of the number of birds in these trees, that's something you couldn't really do with direct observation. So you probably have to use one of these other methods. Indirect observation. Um, let's take this for an example. Let's say you were counting the number of birds in this tree. One way to indirectly have a good estimate of the number of birds in this tree is to count the number of nests. If you could observe, oh, let's say, 10 nests in this tree by knowing that, oh, there'd be about three or four birds per nest, then you can just simply multiply three or four times 10 to get a good estimate of the population there. So that'd be an example of indirect observation. Another example is called sampling, and sampling is a pretty good way to do things, like uh, with this field of sunflowers. If you were to know how big the entire field is and count just the sunflowers in, say, one one-hundredth of that area, just like in this little box right here, if you were to count all the sunflowers that I'm marking over right here in this box and then multiply it by 100, then you could get a rough estimate or approximate number based upon reasonable assumption that uh, there would be that many sunflowers in the field. Another possible way to study a population or get a population count is by mark and recapture. Now that's something not very practical with the sunflowers here, but it might would, would be with the birds. Oh, hey, there's a bird right here. Let me let it fly. Or maybe that's a flying pig or something, but I'm betting that's a bird. But anyway, if you were to uh, say mark or tag a certain number of these birds, let's say you were in this area for a while, you were able to capture some of the birds and put tags on their wings. If you knew exactly how many birds you tagged, say you tagged 100 birds just for sake of a number. You release them and then later on you gather the birds again. Now only a percentage of them would have tags, but if you had a high percentage with tags, you know the population is close to 100. If you had a low percentage of tags, you'd know that the population is far more than 100. So there are actually formulas you could plug in to uh, get a good estimate of the population just by doing that. Now there are other things we want to talk about here. And you can see, some, uh, see them right here. Uh, there are some factors that go into a population of a species and most of these factors have to do with a, a good bit of time. Now keep in mind population isn't all the species, it's just one species in one area. One of the factors is going to be the birth rate. Um, birth rate of say the birds. I mean how many birds are born in a certain amount of time? Another population of uh, factor is going to be the death rate. How many birds die in a certain amount of time? And that's going to naturally affect the population if you have more animals being born than there are animals dying. If you have more animals being born, then that means the rate is going up. And that's what you're looking for. You're determining whether the population is growing or whether the population is declining. 
Now there's other fi factors that go into that and it has to do with immigration and, well, immigration. These two words look almost exactly alike and they are spelled, pronounced alike, immigration and immigration. But immigration in an I with an I is moving into a population. Into. That's how I remember it because it's I into. I for immigration with an I. Immigration with an E are those that are exiting a population, those that are leaving a population. Exit with an E. That's how I remember that. Immigration with an E has to do with those that are exiting with an E. So that's the difference between immigration with an I and immigration with an E. Immigration with an I are those coming into the population, those with an E are those who are exiting the population. And of course those are going to be a factor. If you have all these birds here that are leaving to go to another area, that's going to significantly decrease the population, regardless of what the birth rate and death rate happen to be. So those have to be factors. Hmm. Uh, things like food supply in an area, weather in an area, those are things that might determine the amount of immigration or immigration of a species. There are some other terms down here I want you to know. Population density. Population density is the number of individuals in a specific area, the number of organisms in a specific area. And I'm talking about like a uh, per square mile or per square foot. You could say there for these sunflowers, maybe there are five sunflowers per square yard. Uh, three and a half butterflies per square feet, ten foxes per square mile. That's what we're looking at with population density. Another couple of terms, limiting factor. A limiting factor is one of those environmental factors that causes a decrease in population. We mentioned earlier the weather. Um, if you have bad weather for a year, or bad weather for a summer that would limit the population of the sunflowers here. Um, and the final term is carrying capacity. Carrying capacity is the largest population that an area can support. Uh, I'm going to use a small area for this example, th this tree here. You know, we mentioned how you can have um, an estimate of the number of birds in this tree. The carrying capacity is as many birds as this tree could hold. Now, you can imagine that a lot of birds could sit on the branches, but by that I mean all these birds have to compete for the food that is there. They have to compete for the nest area that is there. So there's only so many birds you can fit in the tree that could live compatibly together, I guess you might say. So that carrying, that is called the carrying capacity. Now what tends to happen is whenever you, let's say you get too many birds in this tree. The birds get smaller because they are not compete, they're competing for the same food. Uh, the bird population will die down. Birds will exit this tree. They will immigrate with an E away from this tree. So that means you'll probably stay around carrying capacity even if temporarily you end up with too many birds. So let's say too many birds leave this tree, then you have not many birds for a lot of worms, a lot of food that happens to be there. So that would encourage more birds to come into the tree, to immigrate with an I, I guess you might say. So sometimes you have factors like shortages of food, shortages of water and weather that can decrease a population regardless of its carrying capacity. So let's say it doesn't matter how many birds you have in here, if the food supply, the worms, end up leaving, then you're going to have all the birds leaving at some point. Well, I hope you have learned a little bit about population, study of population, and don't forget to go back to these questions.
if you haven't finished them already.